In the first video of this series, we made this nice little form and using just a couple of lines of code, we turned this credit card detail into a, credit, a Stripe credit card token that we could use to either charge a card or save a card to a customer. In this video, we're going to turn this credit card token into an actual charge. We're actually going to get money from the user's credit card. So, to get started, we're going to go back into our code and we're going to delete this little guy here. We're going to be doing our charging over here on the server. So we need to set up Stripe on the server. Setting up Stripe on the server is a little bit different to setting up Stripe on the client. Like uh, a node package in node.js, you're initializing your package into a variable, which then can be accessed by all of our other code. To do that, we want to call there Stripe. And in here, we're going to set up our Stripe package. To do that, we're going to go. To do that, we're going to go Stripe API, and we're going to pass in our private key this time. Up here, we passed in our public key, but because this is on the server, we want to pass in our private key. So Stripe dot. Uh, sorry, that's media. We want to call media dot settings dot Stripe pri or private key. Now that we have Stripe set up, we can make calls to it. We're going to do that in a method. I might set up our server-side method first, and then I'll call that method up here in our client. So down here is our server-side method, so medial.method. If you don't know how to use medial server-side methods, I'm sure I'll probably make a video for it at some point, and I will include an annotation around here. Otherwise, just look it up, there's heaps of details about it, and it's pretty simple, and it's actually pretty impressive how well it works. Uh, this method we're going to call charge, charge card, oh. we're going to call charge, we're going to call charge card, and function, we're going to pass our uh, card token. It. So, what do we do to charge a card? Well, let's go over to the Stripe documentation here at stripe.com. I'll include a link in the description. And because we're using the node package, we can go down here to the API libraries. And once we're on our API libraries page, we can go down to node.js and we can just use the node.js API docs because they're pretty much the same as the package that we got from Atmosphere. Now that we're in our docs, we want to go to charges and we're going to create a charge. We have these two and a third down here required um, attribute that we're going to send to this method call and we're going to call it just like this. So here is sort of what we did just a second ago with this line there and here is what we're going to do now. So we're going to call stripe dot charges dot create, and we're going to pass in first a directory with these three items that are required. And you can add a description. You can add a description as well. Uh, this would just be this is what appears up on the users. This is what appears on the customer's credit card statement. So it's probably a good idea to include. But for now, we'll just exclude it because I can't be bothered. The first thing we want to put in is the amount. And this is in the lowest denomination of your currency. So here in Australia, we have cents. So if I put in 500 cents, that will be $5. The next thing we have is currency. So, And this will depend on where you are. So if we just go over here, we can find the three letter ISO codes for all the currencies Stripe supports. And we just go down here. We can see all the currencies that Stripe supports. In my case, I'm going to use Australian dollars. And in my case, I'm just going to use Australian dollars because that's what my account is set up to. So that's what I need to accept. The final thing we need is a source, the source of our cash, where we're going to do 
charge to. So later, in a later video, we'll use a customer as a source. In this video, we're going to use our card token as a source. Final thing we need to do is set up our callback, both with an error and with a result or response or whatever you want to call it. In this response, uh, this callback, we're first going to check if there is an error. If there is, we're going to throw that error up the stack back to the client. So we're going to throw a meteor error. So we go throw new meteor error. It's a 500 error because it's on the client, uh, the server. Sorry, uh, we want to just call it Stripe error. We want to give it a message, and we're going to just use the message that Stripe gives us. So it might be card declined or um, card not found or something like that. Whatever the message Stripe gives us, we'll just throw that back up to the client. If we don't have an error, we want to say that we're successful in making our charge. So we're going to return. Uh, we might just return the whole result object. Now the result object looks like this down here. It gives you an ID, object, charge. You can see all the information that's attached to it there. On the client, we actually I might also log out that result just so we can have a look what we get back on our server. So the final thing we need to do is set up our client side. The first thing we're going to do on our client side is of course call our Meteor method. So Meteor call and we're calling charge card. We're going to pass in our card DL card token which we get out of our result and it was called the ID and finally we want a callback so you so func function we want our callback so function and we're going to get either an error or a response you should be calling these response I don't know why I'm calling them result it's just a semantics, but result, uh, response is the better thing to call it. We're going to check if we have an error. And if we do have an error, we're going to alert the client to the error, and we'll just send them the message out of that error. Else, we are going to also alert the client. And this time, we're going to alert them with the success of their charge. So you were and we'll just append our ID to this which is in our response so do ID and yeah that should work let's save it check that our app is refreshing yep so it's restarted go onto our page and Okay, so go onto our page and check, put in our card ID, put in our fake expiry month and our fake date, uh, CV code, and press the submit button. Wait for everything to load. We have an error. Exception in delivering result of charge card. So let's go back over here. So up, 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 up. Hmm. Okay, so the problem seems to be here. So I might just take off that ID. I don't think it likes that. And we'll just log out the response, and I might log the response as well. See what's going on there. I don't think it should be a big problem. We'll just wait for our page to reload and get our testing. One, two, one, nine, one, one, one. Press our submit button. Oh. Okay, press submit and see what happens. Apparently our cards are oh, too long. Okay, so one final attempt. And there we go. Our card was successfully charged. For some reason our response is undefined. I don't know why that's a thing. I'm guessing result. Result. Yet it's been um, logged on the server. I don't quite know why it's doing that. Um, but you should be able to solve those problems in your production application. 
So that's how you charge a customer card if you're just using it once in your application. In the next video, I'll show you how you can create a customer in Stripe, link that customer to your media user, and charge that customer after you've saved them.